What's up everybody, it's George Gabriel and this is part four of the Autoload, creating an amazing expandable logic template. In part three, we went over adding software instruments to the environment, that background thing. We also put multi-timbral instruments. Those are the one instance instruments that have multiple MIDI channels and how to set them up in the environment. In part four, we're gonna look at getting the most amount of real estate for our auto load and getting rid of some of those garage band leftovers and setting some of our settings. Let's take a look. So when we look at our auto load, we can see that we have all of our tracks here. We have our audio tracks that we set up and we have our software instruments as well as our multi timbral instruments. But we're still dealing with this lack of real estate, this little area here. So the first thing I like to do to get rid of real estate issues is go into our tracks, just right click and go to track header components. And I like to take the volume and I like to take the pan off. And the reason why we do this is because the volume and pan are right over here. We can adjust our volume from the fader, we can adjust our pan here. There's no need to have it duplicated over here. It's way more important to have more bars to choose from than have a big old volume knob and pan knob over here. Now, some of you may have the volume knob up here, and if you do, you're gonna right click this area and you're gonna do customize control bar and display. This is our control bar up above, and there's four sections that we're looking at. The views, the transport, the LCD, and the modes and functions. First of all, if you looked at my other videos, you know how I feel about library, and I do not recommend you using library, but we do need the inspector here. The inspector is where you have your channel, and so you definitely wanna have that there. And a quick help is, only necessary if you're a beginner, but I would not recommend having that either. Uh, the toolbar is an important thing to show up. The toolbar is an area where you can actually put some uh, other commands, which is particularly useful in editing pieces when you have to do different timed versions of a piece. The mixer and the editor are important parts of our workflow as well. I don't use smart controls. I don't particularly care for smart controls. It dumbs down controls that you can modify yourself. You don't need the smart controls. But if we look at this other section here, it's what's on the other side, on the right side of the screen, which is list editors, notepad, Apple loops, and browsers. Now, I don't really use Apple loops, so I don't have that in the mix here. And notepad, I don't really use either. But it is important to have the list editors and the browsers. The list area is where you're gonna look at your event, your markers, manage your markers, your tempo, time signature. Really, the most I use out of this is tempo, sometimes events, sometimes markers, depending on what. Time signature as well. It really is kind of an important part to have on here. And of course, over here, the browser is where we actually have our audio files, and that's an important thing to have as well. The next thing I like to look at is the transport. Now, a lot of this stuff you don't really need. Like, I took out rewind and fast forward. Really, the only things I use are go to beginning, stop, play, record, and cycle. Um, there are some other things that you can put in here if you so choose, but again, we're on a laptop, so we're looking at saving real estate. And so I, you don't need too much stuff on here. When we get to the LCD, which is this section in the center, I typically like to choose custom because I want to pick the things I want on this. I do like to know the position. I like to know the locators. Um, I also like to know the tempo. And since I'm on a laptop, the performance meter is kind of important because it lets you know if your laptop is being overloaded or not. Other than that, I pretty much keep stuff out of this. Again, I'm trying to keep it simple. And finally, the modes and functions are something that you want to set up. I don't really have too many modes and functions that I like. Uh, I do not like the count in. I do not use the count in, and I don't think it's a good thing to use. That's my personal preference. I certainly don't like that master volume. It should not be here. It's misleading, and it makes people think that that's where their volume is. It's not. So I definitely don't have that here. Of course, you need to click. Uh, I don't use solo, so I'm turning solo off. If I'm gonna solo, I'll solo on the track level. I do want the tuner there because if I'm using an instrument, I wanna be able to tune. And the only other thing that I really like on this is low latency mode, and that is if you're using multiple plugins and you start to slow down a little bit and you start to get some latency, it just helps your performance. And make sure when you set all these up the way that you want them, you don't hit revert because it'll just go back to what it was before. Just click out of it. Now, moving to the next things that I like to have set up, uh, I wanna make sure that my drag is on overlap. You know, depending on what mode you're working on, I don't really like no overlap because it kind of deletes whatever was there region-wise. And so I just use overlap because I wanna be able to manually decide where my regions go. 
As far as the snap, I leave it to smart. And when it gets to my primary and secondary tools, I happen to like the scissor as my secondary tool. It just depends on what your workflow is. For me, I like the scissors. This is just so the track follows you along. So I like to have that activated. I don't really activate flex and I don't really activate the automation at this point because there's no point in doing that at this stage of the game. There is this one little area that is important and this is just this corner where your bar starts. Now, I don't use the count in and I think that most people start their pieces of music at bar one, but this really gives you no lead in. And yes, that's what the count in's for, but I don't like to be forced to use a count in. It slows me down. I like to be able to pop in where I want to record and I like to see bar zero. It's kind of the precursor to what my composition is going to be. And sometimes there's a pickup, you know, you might do one, two, three, but da, 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 and you can't really do that with a bar one there. So when this thing turns into this tool right here, now you can drag this. So it, the start says zero, 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 one. And now you're starting at bar zero, which I prefer. So now I can be like one, two, three, but da, da, boom. Finally, the last thing I like to look at is setting my quantization for the session. Now, if you click on a software instrument and you just click anywhere in this area, you can see quantize is set to off. Now, I like to have my quantize set just to 16th notes, and that sets the quantization for our MIDI instruments for the entire session. So that is set now. Finally, I like to get a little bit more real estate by squeezing this little area like that. And now I've got 31 bars versus what I had when I started, which was less than that, I think 27. So now I have more real estate to work with and I've kind of de-garage bandized this. I've taken out the garage band elements. I've set my settings the way that I want them and I am good. I'm gonna just do a quick save on this, go file, save. And that tightens up my auto load to have the max amount of real estate and to have everything where I want it. Really, it's just a couple simple steps to get that real estate going on in Logic and to get everything customized the way that you want. Now, I will note that your idea might be different. You might like certain tools where I don't like those tools. This is up for you to decide. Um, this is how I do it. These are the things that I think keep me very efficient in my workflow, but it's entirely up to you exactly how you set this up. That's your choice. But this has given us more real estate and that's especially what we want on a laptop. And that is how we've set this up. And that's it for part four as far as de-garage bandizing our auto load and getting our settings set. In part five, we're gonna take this another level by making our screen sets. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon to be notified for future videos and leave your comments if you have any ideas of how you would do this differently. Let's dialogue about it. I'll see you on part five of this series, The Auto Load. Till then, thanks for visiting George Gabriel Music.